Pterodactyl here, and we're on part two of the scrambler, and I'm working on the throttle. So what I ended up doing, I took that other panel off on the back, because there were two panels, and you're able to get both your arms in there, and it makes it a little easier to work on. So I went ahead and took this throttle control plate, control plate, control plate off the bottom of the engine. So I could rig up the throttle and put some more tension on that governor spring so we can get some more speed out of it. Now, Briggs had made a, a throttle control, and here's the part number, for like mini bike engines. So you could hook up a stranded cable throttle to it with a return spring. And here's what's in the kit. You get this bracket and a spring, and you get this part here where the stranded mini bike cable would go into, and a couple of screws to secure it. So when I took my plate off, because it says in the instructions to slide this thing through here and then secure it with one of the screws. The only problem is this plate, it's, it's blocked off. It doesn't go all the way through. Probably came up with this after this, after 80, 85. So I went upstairs in my junk room and got a five horse Briggs gas tank which has got this same part on it. And this one, it goes all the way through. So now I can put this thing in there like this. Because this is how it goes and then you put this screw in there. So let's take this one off. and put this one on. Got to tighten that up. And then this fits in these holes like this. And then this is your spring. So I won't need that big spring they had, they had hooked up. Get me some needle nose pliers. There we go. There. Now I slide my stranded cable through there and tighten that down. And then when we step on the gas pedal, it's going to pull this across. I knew I had these. So this thing was going back a little bit too far this way and this little gear wanted to jump out so I needed to add some kind of limiter or stop to it. So I went ahead, there was a little hole here, so I went ahead and drilled that out, that little divot, and I put a screw in there and that keeps this from going back too far because that would have been a problem. Now I need to get a stronger, heavier governor spring so we can get some more RPMs out of it, but yet still have somewhat of a governor. But yet we want to rev it more than 3,600 RPM. So I got to search around, find me a spring now. All right, so I eliminated these three parts on the throttle. This was the return spring they had, which I'm not even sure if it's the original one. I have to look in the parts list. I put a heavier governor spring on it and I got rid of this. And now we got that Briggs throttle set up in there. Push on the gas pedal there, slip dog. All right. See what kind of throttle spots we got now.
better when you got throttle. Blade man and throttle. Now that we got the throttle all sorted out, that's what they say in England, they sort things out. Let's sort it out. Now we need to address this start button issue. And I think it needs a new solenoid. The solenoid isn't really secured that good. And like I said before, also I would like to relocate the battery. I want to be able to, I want to pull this pan out. And I want to look at the other chain and stuff. And I want to test it uh, to see if it's uh, got any leaks. But first we're going to change out this solenoid. And I'm going to use one of our Sten solenoids. And here's the part number. And we're only using three connections or three posts on this solenoid. We're not using that fourth one. So that's why I'm going to use this universal Sten's three post solenoid. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that out. We'll see if that makes it start better or engage better. All right, I went ahead and disconnected the battery. And look, it's got the code date on there. D5. So this battery is from 2015. So it's like six years old and it's still good. It's still cranking it over. So yeah, the guy I got it from was right. He did say, you know, he drove it like five years ago. All right, let's get this solenoid off. Keep all these together. That lock washer is like seized on there. Nice. Now this is all for our charging system and probably headlights. And then I can shorten these wires up when I relocate the battery to the back. That'll make it easier in case you ever have to jump it or something. You don't have to pull that seat out. I want to have that seat secure. I don't want that seat to just be able to pop it in and out. I need an extension. We'll get that out. Well, here's the solenoid I took out and the ears are broke off. And it was only being held on with one, barely. So, put that in the bin. And I drilled another hole, and I drilled it 730 seconds because I'm going to put a self-tapping screw in there so I don't have to put a, a bolt and a nut from underneath. I will on the, on the original hole, and I'll use the same, same kind of fastener so I got a 3 8 head socket on there. But the other side, this will make its own threads with this self, self snapper. Oh, and I cut off that other mount because this was a universal. It had that other mount on there. So I cut that off. Then we'll take off this little tab since we already got an eyelet in there. trigger wire but you know what I'll put the I'll put the tab back on anyway it's not gonna hurt to leave it off we'll hook up our wires and hook the battery up and see if it if it kicks in any better that 
cable all tangled in there. Alright, got the solenoid back in, we got the battery hooked up. Let's see if it's any better. Again, this battery is six years old. I may have to just put a new battery in it. Well, it's engaged in better. I put a new battery in it. Okay, I went up front in the shop and got a new battery out of stock. Now let's see how it engages. Oh yeah. Every time. So that battery, I notice sometimes when you run those trickle chargers on these batteries, it kind of boils some of the water out of them. I bet you if I crack this, this thing open and looked, I bet you the water levels are probably low on it. But it's only a 230 cranking app battery and it is six years old. So we'll just go with a new battery. And again, I wanted to relocate the battery to the back. So I'm gonna get me some angle iron and I'm gonna build me a battery box. Well, here's my battery box I built out of some scrap angle iron I had laying around. And I got a battery hold down on there. I know what you're saying. Huh? Hey, where'd you get that battery hold down? I want to know about that battery hold down. All right, all right, take it easy. Hold on a minute, I'm going to tell you. I got it from Rotary. And here's the part number. And here's the, the threaded rods that hold it down. So you can go on online, do a giggle search on the inner screen, and I'm sure you'll find somebody selling this Rotary brand battery hold down. Now this is a junk battery that I put in there. So we'll take this out because I gotta weld this in into the back. But see, this is adjustable. So you can adjust this, see how it hooks in? So for any, for a battery that you got. That's how it works. So if you got a wider battery or if you wanna go this way. So it's adjustable is what I'm saying. So I set it up like that. I use my uh, chop saw and miter cut the corners, welded it from the backside, and then just welded a couple of washers on there. Just a simple battery box. Okay, I think I'll weld it in right here. Weld it here, and I should be able to weld it over there. And that should be enough to hold. I could probably weld a little bit on the inside here too. Away from the chain. That way you can get to it to jump it by taking the back seat out. Plus it'll make it easier for pulling this bottom pan out to get to the rest of the stuff. So let's go ahead and weld it in and shorten up the wires. And I got the battery tray welded in. And of course, since this is fiberglass, you know, you got to take some precautions because fiberglass will catch on fire. Because I know some of you are thinking, is he going to weld inside that fiberglass body? He's crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. Have me committed. So I wet it down with water and I had the garden hose there just in case. And I had slippers on fire watch. And it all went well. There's no water in there. So I pulled out the base pan so I could get another look at all the different gears in here and look, fluffy set up house <laughs> underneath that platform. But I wanted to look at, at the chains to see if they, you know, they're all tight. This one's a little loose, but they're tight. And then if you're wondering, these are clutches. These springs on here are clutches. 
So in case you're driving it and you overload it, it'll kind of give. So it doesn't break stuff in the drivetrain. I noticed that they're on all five out of the six wheels. There must be a reason there's not one on here. Because see, this has got snap rings and stuff on there. So I don't know, maybe this works for both. Or maybe you don't need it on there, I don't know. But we'll get this, this mess clear, cleared out of here. And I'm gonna have to short reroute and shorten up these battery wires for back there. And over here on the on this tray, it would be nice if there's no storage on here. It'd be nice to have some storage under the seat, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. That battery box is kind of tall, and there's really no way to kind of to get in there. I don't know, maybe if I cut it down to like half the size, you can kind of store a few things in there. Maybe I come up with some idea under the dash here. Some kind of glove box or something up under here. There's room under here. Maybe I can put some kind of fanny pack or something under there. Just so you got a place to store a few items to come up with some kind of storage idea. But I need to fix that seat back to here. I don't, I don't know what the heck this was supposed to do. Fiberglass on the steel here. This is a steel plate. This is a steel plate. I don't know how they, and these are like, these are like duck surfs. Why not, why didn't they just weld nuts on the back of this metal plate? So, which is what I'll probably end up doing. Probably take these off and weld some nuts on the back side. Probably should, this is kind of thin. Probably take a thicker piece of steel, maybe. Or block of steel here that's like quarter inch thick. Maybe I'll drill and tap that and weld it to this plate. I have to take these off though, because again, this is fiberglass and we don't want to start any, you know, we don't want to start on fire. All right, we got the battery in, got the cable shortened, got it all cleaned out. Check it out. There's the battery. So all I did was just come off the frame with a short ground cable. So I eliminated that one that was up here and then I just took the existing positive cable and shortened it up. Put a, a, a protector on the top so we know that that's positive. And I trimmed down those studs a little bit. They were sticking up high. Now, we, now we're in there all nice and secure. And I got in there with the shop vac and sucked everything out and put the plugs in. So now we're gonna start filling it with some, with some agua. And we're gonna see if we got any leaks. Plus this will help clean it up. We got her filled up about to the axles and there are a couple of leaks. One's in the front coming out of one of the axles. I'm gonna put some more water in. Leaking out of here, out of one of these axle seals. This one looks like it's starting to drip too in the front. And it's leaking in the back, one of the drain plugs. That plug that's in the back isn't the right plug anyway. That's not bad, those little, little leaks. 
drain plug one, that's no big deal. I'll have to investigate these ones on the axle before we take it out the podunk lake. Just as long as it's not leaking real quick to where, you know, we would be at the bottom of the lake. I'm sure the tires would hold it up. Here's the brackets to put the seat back in. This is some quarter by two flat stock. So it'll bolt to this and then this is threaded 5 16 which the seat will bolt to. And then this is the one for the back. Got these screw bolts and then this is for the seat. So now, that's a much better way of doing it than the way they did it. I don't know why they did it this knucklehead way with those inserts they had. They should have just put some heavier steel in it, drilled and tapped it. So now our seat will be in it. I'm going to cut down that battery box. Well, fix the leaks. All I had to do was grease them bearings and it stopped leaking. So all I need to get is a new plug in the back, a new stopper. And then I got the seat all secured back on the platform. There's my, my threaded stiffeners. So now you can take the seat out from inside if you have to. And then you can bolt it back in. You don't have to hold any nuts or anything on the back side. And then that battery box, I just took my little battery uh, circular saw and I cut it down so now there's a little compartment under there throw some tools or something in there so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna drain all the water out and then I'm gonna put bolts in these wheel hubs these wheel hubs they had these big cotter pins in there and what happens is, there's a little bit of play in that hub now. And over time, from that thing rocking back and forth like that on this cotter pin, it's going to start to egg shape the hole in the hub. And that's going to ruin the hub and possibly the shaft. So I already took a hub off on the other side because that's the cotter pin. And I put some grade five, uh, put a grade five bolt in there. So I'm going to do all the hubs. I'm gonna pull all them cotter pins out and put these bolts in there to tighten up them hubs on the axles. And then we're gonna go over the tires. Then we'll take it for another spin. See how this thing rocks on the shaft? See, there's that giant cotter pin. So we're gonna take them off and put some 5 16 by two grade five bolts in there and that'll That'll tighten them up. Usually just snap these off. Plus, if you're out in a field or something and you need to get that hub off, you know, you're gonna ruin these cotter pins because they break. As soon as you start to bend these tabs, they snap off. And then you'll end up putting a bolt in there anyway. This one's got a couple of holes in there. Guess you could stick it in a little farther, huh? Oh, did I say we were gonna take it for a ride? <laughs> Forgot, we already took it for a ride when I fixed the throttle in the beginning of the video. So, I guess Mr. Cameraman can put some more ride footage at the end of the video, can't you? Right. So in part three, we're gonna go over the tires. I'm gonna put some different tires on it. And the whole part three video is gonna be testing these tires. And this is the tire I bought. I bought an ATV sand tire. Cause it's got the big flaps on it. And I thought, hey, 
maybe this will work better in the in the water because we're going to take this to Podunk Lake and we're going to drive it around. So these are Duro Dune Blasters. I don't know why they call them Dune Blasters. They should have called them Sand Blasters. Now these are 20 11 by 8. Now the stock tires on here are 22 12 by 8. So these are just a little bit short, but they will work. Now another thing, I don't want to have to take these tires off of these rims and put these tires on those rims. That's a lot of work. And another thing I found out is these are on four and a half inch centers. I thought they were golf carts, same as golf cart rims. These are on four inch centers. These are on four and a half inch centers. And I could not find any rims, replacement rims. So in part three, I'm gonna show you how I made these golf cart rims and these tires work on this Scrambler 6x6. Six six. So stay tuned for part three. We're going to Podunk Lake, baby, Podunk Lake. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. There's me, Slippers and Junior. Follow me with your 6x6s six on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some tarot apparel, and as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Scrambler 6x6! Six six. Got it starting good. Fixed a few little things here and there. Made sure it didn't leak. Now we're gonna do some tire experiments. Stay tuned, part three, baby. Woo!